Today, I have the pleasure of speaking to a true media queen who's dominating the world of fashion, lifestyle, beauty, and entertainment by simply being herself. Her famous phrases like, are you not embarrassed? And her oh. iconic expressions <laughs> live rent free in our heads. And she continues to fly the flag for content creators that deserve to be in the mainstream. Voted best media personality of the year at the 2022 MOBA Awards and the hottest detective in town on MTV UK's Catfish. Please welcome <laughs> Nella Rose. Hey, that was such a sick intro. I was just seeing a gas. Like. <laughs> this is what we do around here, girl. And first of all, Nella, welcome to the mainstream. Thank you for having me. No, I'm so gassed to be speaking to you. And um, <laughs> like, like I said, you've had such an incredible career to date, still bossing it every day. But let's take a trip down memory lane, first of all. Yeah. So you was born and raised in Belgium. Mm -hmm. First of all, tell me what your childhood was like in Belgium. If you remember uh, it, first of all. Yeah. I think the only way I could describe my childhood in Belgium was like, just magical. Like, my mom lived two minutes away from my dad's house. So I was house hopping, it was so lit. Um, I loved my neighborhood. All my family lives there still currently. It was just really nice. Like it was just I just really like Belgium. Um, because that's where I was born, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Like my childhood in Belgium was really magical. Like I just everything was perfect when I was there, basically. Yeah. Do you know why you left Belgium? Yeah, that's yeah, we we left because we just had to leave. But <laughs> we ended up in the UK and I remember it was such like a culture shock. Yes. To me. Because you know in Belgium, like you know when you come from these European cities, it's like you say you know all your neighbours, you know everyone yeah. in the neighborhood, you say hi to the driver, like you respect your teachers. Like I remember when I was growing up, your teachers were allowed to slap you, bro. Like oh. Yeah, in Belgium, that was nothing. And it's like you res you have respect for elders, this, that, and the other. And then when my mom told me we was moving to the UK, I remember when you grow up not in the UK, the way the UK is shown on TV is so mad. Like, I'm here thinking, like, oh, my days. Like, you know the Queen's Guards? I thought that that was just the police in the UK. Oh, and my people the police look like that and then like the queen like everybody loves the queen and london yeah. is super 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 clean and the big ben is massive and the london eye is massive and obviously in belgium where i grew up we didn't wear school uniform like people in europe don't wear school uniform you okay. only wear school uniform if you go to a private school so now they're telling me that every school in the uk wears uniform something in every school is a private school oh my god then I'll pull up to Victoria Station. I see rats. I said, there's no way there's rats. Not the I rats. Saw pigeons, pigeons. I said, there's no way there's pigeons in the UK. Like, the schools weren't private. Like, everyone wore uniform. No one really cared about, like, oh, my God, Buckingham Palace. Like, just no one. It was just all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I just had the biggest, like, awakening. And I was just like, oh, well, I'm here now. I got down. Let's so, do it. <laughs> Carry on, <laughs> shit. That is the most honest reality check of coming to London. This is it, yo, guys. This is yo. it. <laughs> it was, nah, culture shock. shock I shock, can shock. imagine. But <laughs> one thing I love hearing about your childhood is that your dad was very much into making memories and he actually yeah. is the first person that put you on camera and yeah. he used to record you all the time. Do you actually know why he used to do that? Is there a thing that he said that you remember that why he did I, that? I think it was with my dad. He was pretty much obsessed with his children. Aww, like his children were like his whole life, his, the only thing he cared about, the only thing he woke up in the morning to do is like, I need to make my children happy. I, do you know what I mean? And when you come yeah. from a divorced household and you're the guy, the kids mainly stay with their mums. Like you see your yeah. kids on the weekends, half term, Christmas, this, that, and the other. So for those moments that we was together, he wanted to just capture everything so that when everyone will go back to their mum's house, he could have like, he could just watch his kids. Oh, together. it's true. Yeah, so he just like, to this day, I have cassettes of from when I'm like zero years old up until I'm like 22. Like just of my dad's 
Let's just put that out there. She said cassettes. <laughs> and the thing is, yeah, he just he just keeps that cassette. Like we still have it at the house, and it's just wow. let me. Yeah, been vlogging. What's good? Yeah. Listen, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that because I love yeah. that it's been in you from day. But um, yeah. it makes me think. When you was a child, did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? You know, the usual, like, oh, I want to be a doctor. Oh, I want to be a da-da-da. Did you know what you wanted to do when you was younger? Joe you know was mad. I didn't know. Like, even, even at, when I got to the second year of uni, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. Oh. With me, I never knew what I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted to be famous and I wanted to be successful. Oh, okay. like I just Hey, I, that's interesting. I was, like, five or six years old, and I had this image of me, like everyone knowing who I am just that any other and then it was like okay but you can't sing okay but you can't dance okay but you can't but I just had this image in my head that I'm gonna make something of myself and somehow I've done it I think it was like not manifestation but like speaking things into existence and having this like delusional mindset and then it just happens like what the hell nice definitely yeah this the the seed was planted and that's yeah. kind of all you knew so that's understandable like if you're like oh I can do this why not yeah. I feel like more young people need to be like that like yeah, invincible as, as kids you're naturally dreamers yeah so, like I used to dream like oh yeah one day I'm gonna meet Britney but I used to be obsessed with Britney Spears Christina Aguilera Beyonce we all were girl we all were <laughs> Yes, yeah, Spice Girls, like, yeah, I'm going to be chilling with them one day. I was proper delusional as a child. And somehow it's just happened. So, yeah. You did that, girl. You did that. Well, Laura. on top of that, like you mentioned, you were vlogging from day. Like, yeah. okay, so your dad bought you a camera when you was yeah. going into secondary school. So you decided. No, was, oh, before then. No, no, no. It was after. He oh. was in we have the same obsession. Like I have like eight or nine cameras. Like he's, oh, wow. his camera's like, don't touch my babies. So it was the thing <laughs> where I was too young to touch the camera because he thought I was going to drop it, break it. Uh. Okay. And I was in year, either in year eight or in year nine. I don't really remember. Okay. He got me a camera. And then uh, I was just like, oh my God, this is my first camera. God damn. <laughs> and then I remember when it got to year nine, the teachers were putting a lot of pressure on us. Like it was the end. You have to pick your GCSEs. Right. The decisions you make today will decide whether you're going to go to college. And that's what going to give you the qualifications to go to. Yeah. Oh, I'm 13. Calm down. <laughs> like, calm down. <laughs> but then the teachers all were telling us, oh, you're going to have to pick your GCSEs and all this and that. It was, it just put a really big realization in me that raw like, this is coming to an end. Like, no, like we're actually going to have to leave school. School was, I wanted to be in school for the rest of my life. Sorry. Yeah. So then I was just like, oh my God, obviously there was no Snapchat. There was no nothing <laughs> back then. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make like a big video over like the last few years that we have remaining in school. So I would record sports day. I'd record us in McDonald's at the back of the bus making noise. I would record, like, I'd make us do challenges. Like, I made us do, like, the Scotch Bonnet Challenge at, like, 13. It was so bad. I nearly got experienced. No way. I would make us, like, I would arrange, like, for the whole year group to do things together, like, water fights, da, 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 just so I could get content for my video. And then on results day, I sold it. And I think I made, Listen, like... Boss move. <laughs> Listen, I was burning DVDs, yo, in my room. I was, so I went to... I don't know what store I went to. I bought loads of DVDs and I was burning DVDs. And then on results day, I didn't even care about my results. I cared about, oh my God, like people are going to buy this. It was five pounds. People are going to buy this DVD and they're going to see what? like my creation. It was like an hour long vlog of like our school thing. Like whatever. one day I'll upload it. Um, I just need Please to get- do. Yeah, no, I just need to get consent from every single person in that video. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but yeah, and not without thinking, like without realizing that was my first vlog. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, like I, I grew up with my dad documenting everything I did and watching it back and knowing that that's just that video, it will always be there. But then, do you know what I mean? It's just beautiful. So I thought, oh, let me do that with school because I thought school was beautiful. I had the best time of my life there. I love Before that. Before that, my first vlog. Then I went to college and I'd done media studies. And they okay. taught me how to use Final Cut. Yes. So it's like every step in my life was just leading me. Do you get it? It was leading me. Yes, 
So yeah, I've done media studies. I've got A star in media studies. Can you imagine? Come like, on. I used to go to a college just for media. Like on the days I didn't have media, I just I wouldn't co- I wouldn't go to college. I can't bother. Um, mm. but yeah, they they made us make our first horror movie. So we were shooting and editing our first horror movie. The any of our smashed it. Got to uni now, and I was just like, okay, what's next? Because I just felt like at the first year of uni, I was I'm a very creative person. Definitely, clearly. <laughs> first year of uni, I was just like there's nothing for me to create like it's just go lecture 9 a.m come back ah seminar 5,000 word essay do you boom 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 do you read it ah! scary like scary traumatizing ill disgusting like i hated it yeah and i was like oh my god like my youngers are all messaging me like oh, i'm coming to uni next year like tell me what it's like i was like bet I'm going to tell you what it's like. I'm going to make a video with all my friends and we're going to tell you what it's yeah. like. And I was like, oh shit, I have too many friends. So let me separate it. Let me do this group, that group, this group and ask them all the same questions and edit them as wow. if I'm asking them all at the same time. And then just upload it and see what it does. So I uploaded it. I just told my friends, oh yeah, by the way, like the video that I made you guys record is up. Not like it viral like I said I said what's happening here it was so crazy I think it's because people had never seen that setup like right kids just in the kitchen chatting shit the way I edited it like people just were used to seeing set videos and then part one part two da, da. but it was all so did in you one promote part. it at all was there any form of promotion uh, or was it I just had, like no I had I had a Twitter I had like 500 followers on Twitter but back in the day listen at uni if you had 500, but listen, girl. You, had, <laughs> you were famous. <laughs> I, I had I had odd boys, period. <laughs> so I uploaded it and then all my friends retweeted it and they were quite tweeting it like, oh yeah, Lord, this day was funny. Oh yeah, that was jokes. Blah, 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 blah. But then it kept getting more and more retweets. More yep. more. And I remember I left it and then I came back to it and it was on like 20,000 views, yeah. Whoa. And, Really had a heart attack. Like I was like, oh my god! Like I've sat down, I've, I've come up with an idea, and I've I've written it out, scripted everything, scripted all my questions, made everyone color coordinate this, that, any other. I've edited it. Spent because normally my videos take like a week or two to edit, so I spent like oh two wow, fair enough. Yeah, because imagine a group of people talking for two hours, four yeah. times, four times, and then you. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot of work that is a lot of work yeah and then I was just like 20,000 like to me 20,000 was like I basically hit a million views like that was so quick like 20,000 people like do you know how much 20,000 people is in a stadium yeah that's the O2 arena yeah so I was like it's a lot people saw my video that's mud so then I just started like the uni chronicles and like I was just yeah. I kept coming up with new ideas like mm, what can we talk about that's relatable okay growing up in the UK growing up black um growing up in an African household like just different things that we all went through that no one really bannered about on YouTube at the time okay. and then we yeah it was really it was really really fun time I had like no bills it was really really fun <laughs> <laughs> he was living your best life from early. Now I love that. And I think it's so interesting to hear you speak about just being organic, being authentic. And like, it's just literally your experience with your friends. And like, yeah, yeah. did you have a plan? Like, did you ever sit down and think? Because obviously nowadays, when people talk about being a content creator, it's like, okay, cool. Weekly vlogs, be consistent, find your niche. Do you have, like, did you ever have a plan or was you genuinely just winging it? I was genuinely winging it. Because remember, I started to do lectures, exams, yeah. like all of this coursework, all of that stuff. I was just winging it. Like whenever I came up with an idea, I'm like, okay, boom. I need to shoot a video. I want this many people. This is the question I'm going to ask in this order. Because yeah. I start editing before I shoot. Like, I'm already edited, yeah, I've already edited the whole video. So this has to go like this, yeah? Or else when I edit, I'm not going to know what to do with myself, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I, I totally get that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm absolutely winging it. I think in the history of UK 
YouTubers, I'm probably the most inconsistent. <laughs> like I just like I'll, I'll go, I'll go, I'll post like three times a week for like two months straight, and yeah. then I'll go through like creators block where I'm just like. I need something different, I need something different, I need something different. Then I'll come back with something different. Yeah. And then it's, I do that and then it's overdone. And I like to go with the flow because in my life especially, I feel like everything that I've planned has not happened. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, you just uh, the unexpected always happens to me in good ways and in bad ways as well. Yeah. So it's like, there's no point of planning anything honestly just if you think you want to do something just do it just do it and having a structure sometimes it becomes very repetitive for you and it becomes repetitive for the viewers so then they're like just watching the same thing if you're doing the same thing so then everyone gets bored facts that is hmm, we haven't even come to the tips yet but that was tea right there thank you um well let's talk about life after uni because of course our girl she came through with a 12 two, one in sociology we love to see it um so <laughs> it was kind of like you had two things going on at one time like uni was doing you're doing your thing you managed to get through it which is incredible mm-hmm. and then you're at you out of uni and the question is do I look for a job or do I carry on with the nah. content creation what did you do no nah. I've I don't. I think it's weird, but I I was in uni for bands. Like I can't lie. I, <laughs> no, you wasn't. I mean, so sociology cool. is not a joke. You know, the fact that yeah. you even got into do sociology means you had the the know how and intelligence to be there. So no, nah, because I just I did I did sociology at college, and I felt like I was learning a lot about myself. So I was like, oh, let me do it at uni, and it's just free therapy. Let's go. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, no, I went to uni because I felt like. Obviously, my parents were just so chill. Like, they don't care. My brother didn't go to uni. My oh, older wow. sister didn't go to uni. Like, they were just so chill. But I remember I had a conversation with both my parents at separate times. And it just came. They just, I don't know. I just felt like it was like a thank you. Like, they, my parents came to Europe from Congo so young. Like, yeah. I, I'm 25 and I can't imagine myself moving to another continent where I don't speak the language. I can't. Um, so I felt like they sacrificed all of that, yeah, to give me better opportunities. And I have the opportunity to basically go get a free loan to do something that they never had the opportunity to do. And I'm just going to be like, nah, when I've got the grades. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I was just like, let me just go get the certificate, make my parents proud. Because, you know, Africa first, all they care about is, well, she's, my daughter said graduate. Well, graduate. Okay, thank you. Now you can, <laughs> now you can let me do what I got to do. Um, but yeah, I had no plans on using my degree for anything. I had no plans on working a nine to five job because I know that when I'm forced into a structure, I want to break out. For example, I was forced into the structure of being at uni, going to, I was like, I'm going to do my own thing on the side. Like, I don't like feeling like I have to do something at a specific, like for a specific yeah. time for the rest of however long my contract is. It makes me really full caged in. Yeah. So, yeah I had some plans when I was in college I had some plans to go into like media production like being a director or a producer but then when my YouTube channel came about it was like oh oh they like me in front of the camera okay cool why not I'm with my friends I'm comfortable it's fun so when I left uni because I was making decent money um uh at uni from YouTube and when I mean decent I was like no 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 I mean like like 500 pound every two weeks but to me at the time yeah that was a lot and I was I'm still I'm a big saver like I splurge on myself when I hit a milestone then I splurge but I'm big saver proper frugal everything can disappear in a day do you know what I mean so I was just like listen it's either you wing it at this YouTube thing and try and smash it and if it doesn't then instead of if it basically my plan was if being in front of the camera doesn't work I'll just go back to being behind the camera yeah that's what that's I did in, yeah that's what I did at college and that's what I did at school I was behind the camera I wasn't in front of it so I was just like yeah front ca- front of the camera doesn't work then behind the camera girl I'm a sick editor you know listen <laughs> listen that girl. is the most genuine like even though you didn't see it at the time you yeah. had a plan always 
Like, and that's so <laughs> impressive to hear. Yeah. Like, regardless, you've been a director, you've been an editor, you've been a producer, yeah. you've been coordinating shoots from day. Yeah, like yeah. we need to put some respect on Nella Rose, the executive producer and director. Oh please. my god, that's my goal to to oh my god to be like a producer or a director. I, I love really, that. Like, like say you know when I'm older and it's like time to hang up my boots. That's my dream. Like I ugh, love that. I love it's, that. It's the best thing, honestly. No, I'm so I'm so happy to hear that. And um, of course, because of all of this golden content a lot yeah. of people have fallen in love with you because of your <laughs> hilarious meme worthy phrases i mentioned it before are you not embarrassed and mm -hmm. your unapologetic honesty with moments like i suffered for 19 years it's I time did. for me to shake my ass on a yacht in dubai in a thong amen, amen. <laughs> and These... that from the heart i did these um, are the memorable moments that, like <laughs> I said before, live rent free in many of our heads. And I'm yeah. sure a lot of your followers, uh, you know, fell in love. Like th that was the point where a lot of us fell deeper in love. We're like, nah, she's the <laughs> realist. Thank but you. what do you think was yeah. one or some of the key moments or videos that kickstarted your career? The, the uni videos, babe, like at uni, I feel like, you know, back in the day, it was either there was two sides to YouTube. So there was the girls, so like hair, makeup, outfits, like, you know, yep. Peak Girl, Patricia Bright, everyone, B by JJ, everyone, yeah. And then the other side of YouTube was like KSI, A Online, Don't Jealous Me. So it was yep. like the girls doing beauty and the boys being funny, but you never saw boys and girls together. So I thought, why? Where else can you bring boys and girls to get in the motherfucking kitchen? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think that the new format was something that people um, received really well. Yeah. So, and, and that's what helped me to become to where I am today. So, really, and Julie, I wouldn't have been able to do it without my friends, to be fair, because I could have asked them to be in a video and they could have been like, no, that's moist. But at least oh. everyone was there. Yeah. yeah. So that was really, I love that. That's, that's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Yeah. So, okay, you you officially become a YouTuber. You're out of uni and you're doing well. The followers are coming in. The subscribers are coming in. Mm -hmm. When did you get your first big collab? And do you remember what it was and how it yeah. felt? Like, did that feel yeah. like a moment for you? Yes, it was still, it was whilst I swear down there, like, it's all down to God. Let me tell you this, yeah. It's Amen. Third year of uni, I was homeless. Like, I was living inside of the uni. Yeah. Like, that was my address. So, it was a point where, after I graduate, I have no address in London. Like, I have nowhere to oh, go wow. back to. So, I need to find a place. So, I was just sitting, I'm praying, I'm just like, oh, my days, God, like, uni's over in a couple of weeks. I've saved up a bit of money, but if the money that I have to get us like a small flat, it's a small flat without furniture, clearly. Like, <laughs> it's a small flat and then how, how will I pay for the, you know, the, the rent on the upcoming month? So after I've paid the deposit, yeah. they are cool. So I'm praying, I'm just like, guy, you're gonna have to make a way out there because, uh, uh, uh. And um, yeah, I'm very good feeling like, when I want something, I fast for it. Like I pray and I fast oh. for it. I put myself in that mentality that, listen, you didn't, God, God didn't bring me this far to only bring me this far. Like that's not that's the right. So one day I'm chilling now. Imagine I'm chilling. I receive an email. Bear in mind, before all the collabs I got was like hair. Like, okay. Yeah. And like like um Asian brands that did like swimwear, but they'd pay really really bad, like a hundred, two hundred pounds. Yeah. Girl, what 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 am I going? That's we need ticket. some more zeros, basically. Literally, from Leicester, that's a ticket to London, and then my money's gone. <laughs> so one day now, I get an email from Fashion Nova. Okay. Yeah. And it's, they're literally like, we want you to do literally one video and a couple posts for this much. It was five figures. Yeah. Awesome. And bear in mind, I had never, like, I, was, I wasn't like a, People didn't come to me for my outfits. They came to me to laugh, bro. So for me to get that deal, I was like, wait, hold, like what? And then, so I did the video and I was like, oh my God, how do I make this video different? Because 
when I watch hauls, all people do is try it on and then they never, they ne- people never used to say when stuff didn't fit. Or people yeah, never, sure. Yeah, they never used to say when they didn't like something, they just wouldn't put it in the hall. And I remember with Fashion Nova, I was, um, I asked them like, oh, is there like a guideline for this video? They were like, be yourself. I said, yeah, bet. Love that. So I got a bunch of stuff, free clothes, by the way. Like, and I needed, I was in serious need of clothes. Like it wasn't even a joke, yeah. Free clothes, so I was like, you know what? Let me make this a production. So I'm going to edit this with funny music and I'm going to pause every time I make a joke. And then, so I started like this editing series of like making Hall's comedy. Yeah. And it blew up. It blew up. So like comedy Hall's was like a thing. And wow. all my memes, literally up until, um, are you not embarrassed? Yeah. All my memes came from my Hall's. So I was going viral every single month. From my wow. room. And um, so, yeah. So after uni, remember, I didn't know what to do. Didn't have a lot of money. When that deal came in and I was able to pay for everything, like move out, buy furniture, do everything. Yeah. Wow. I was like, I, you know what? This is clearly a sign that you should be, that you need to do this. Yeah. That's beautiful. So, girl, like this is why you can't plan things because then you plan things and then something else happens and then you have to go that way. It's so true. So at that time, did you have any guidance? Like when it came to like contracts and money and negotiations, like it's always been you. No. So basically it was, it was just me doing my emails. And then I got, I had management for a little while, but I've, I've always liked to do things like myself and be in full control of my name my brand because it's weird because sometimes that like, even in in life if you're part of, of like a team and you're like for example like say for example um world cup yeah yeah say the team performs bad you you blame the manager like you blame <laughs> it's true. The team. you blame the person who's at the forefront so yeah. it's like I just, I like to be in control of my own thing and I like to see everything and I like to be in all the, involved in all the conversations because I feel like with this industry specifically, like you're a brand, I'm mm. a brand, but our faces are our brands as well. True. So it's like, I like to be in control and, you know, have no pressure and just vibe, you know? Because remember, makes a lot of sense. like, I don't, I don't deal well with like structure. Yeah. like like okay like say for example I was with a management and they told me you need to hit a goal um like every single month which is sick because loads of management see that but with me it's like oh the pressure oh my god I'm gonna <laughs> I can't do it I can't do it I can't do it but yeah, yeah I like to be stress-free and just do my own thing so I have a team of people I have an accountant that does all the money stuff. Come on, a, tell him. Yeah, I have a lawyer that does all the contract because these con- eh, people really be sneaking in some bad stuff in these contracts. Let me tell you that's so true. Invest in a lawyer, literally. A lawyer, um, I have a, an assistant and then I have like a virtual assistant who he does all my emails, um, like takes meetings and stuff like that. So it's like that's like my little team. You are taking notes here, girl. I love yeah, this. Yeah, specifically <laughs> hand picked as well. Um, yeah, and it's That's it's. Really, I, I really like it this way. I do. Well done, well done. Well, well it seems to be working because um, since <laughs> you started, you've worked with huge brands and just to name a few, Netflix, Spotify, JBL, Foot Asylum, Malibu, Fenty. Like it's been great. So for anyone that's an up and coming content creator, what, what advice would you give them when it comes to getting collabs and maybe brand partnerships? Uh, cool. Oh, we can we can be here for a long time. Okay, so number one, the one thing that will make you stand out is that you do not look like or act like a replica. Like, for example, some people's Instagram pages look identical to 50 other Instagram pages. So Very you true. don't stand out. And my whole theory is that remember, you're one of one. Do you get it? I'm yeah. one. I'm special. You're special. There's a reason why your friends and family love you. Do you know what mm. I mean? There's a reason why my friends and family love me. When I'm around my friends and family, I don't pretend to be someone else. I'm just myself and they like me. So if I go on the internet now, my internet 
family will like me for being myself. But if I act like a replica of someone else, like say for example, I love Jackie Aina. Yeah. So say for example, I did everything like Jackie Aina. I acted like her, edited like her. Da, da, da. People would just watch my video and just go straight to Jackie. Yeah. But if I acted like myself, and people liked it the same way my friends and my family like it, then people will graduate um gravitate towards me for me. Like I feel like with brands, they like they're not gonna they're not gonna say there's a big budget for a big campaign. They're not gonna get the twenty influencers that look all the same because they're gonna <laughs> get for real. They're gonna get the same twenty pictures back. Yeah, literally. So be diverse, be yourself, and just always 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 keep in the back of your head that you're enough like you don't have to go and do the like surgeries fill it to, to look like someone else you yourself you're enough you're loved like your parents love your friends and family love you so the world will love you for you as well like changing and trying to fit into like a specific look or a specific personality if it's not you it will show like because you, okay. you won't be able to keep it up you know and that's so sad because then if you put the pressure of, oh, I need to keep up this look so that I can do this and I can do that. And then that's just, it's all going to come crashing down because that's a lot of pressure. So Definitely. just be yourself always, 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 always. That. And if it's not working, just keep going. Like for me to make my first like substantial amount of money. So I was doing YouTube for three years, basically. So imagine three years, you're getting paid like minimum like minimum wage basically for three yeah. years but if it's meant to be for you I, I feel like god like it's like you know when you know when something like say you, an idea gets placed in your head on your yeah. heart there's a reason why it landed there that was the correct address bro that was Amen. The correct and the thing is when you think sometimes like have you ever thought have you ever done something yeah and then you and you smashed it and then you looked back and you was like why didn't i do that sooner why didn't i do that sooner why didn't you do that yeah honestly if an idea has landed on in your head and your heart it's meant to be there that was the correct address so just just smash it like just try your hardest like people don't just sit down like for example the creators of the best things in the world an idea popped in their head mr microwave he sat down and was like you know what yeah i'm not on this stove top thing anymore I'm going to make a microwave. But imagine if he was procrastinating on that for years. We would have had cold food, you know? It's like, true. hello, let's put the plan in action. Let's go. Let's <laughs> Big up. Mr. Microwave. Miss, I can't even say it. Mr. Microwave. Big him Mr. up. Yeah, for Mr. Her. Microwave. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you, them, whoever they are. Uh, yeah. No, honestly, I love that. I love that. Okay, so... The word YouTuber, the word influencer, content creator, like what what do any of those mean to you? Because I know some people don't like it. Are any of those oh. words offensive to you? Are you happy being an influencer, content creator, YouTuber? Uh, I mean, I like the word, let's go through them. I like the word content creator because I feel like that's what I do. I create content. Definitely. The word influencer, I get where it comes from, but I don't like what it sounds like. Because what it sounds like is like, okay, so I've got these long ass, impractical, jobless nails, yeah? Oh, and now because I've got the nails, everyone's going to go and get the nails. Like, no, like, everyone likes what they like. And you choose what you, you, choose, you pick and choose what you want to be influenced by. Do you know what I mean? Like, for example, I watched a documentary on netflix called what the health i'm still not vegan because i try not to be influenced <laughs> do you know what i mean you pick and choose what you want to be influenced by but i hear it in a sense where it's like if you wear something really nice and then it sells out the next day because and because you know you, you influenced a lot of people to wear that i hear it but i think that's just being a trendsetter i don't think oh. anyone can really be influenced to like do to just live their life a certain way, especially a life that they can't afford. Yeah. Because now with this oh, luxury, this soft girl, this it's a life that a lot of people can't afford and people go to lengths to be able to be like everyone else. So it's like pick and choose what you're influenced by. And also, yeah, so influencers, I don't know, people call me one, but I'm a content creator. Yeah. I love that. But do you feel the pressure of being an influence, especially as a young black woman, do you feel the pressure? Mm, yes and no. 
Um, yes, because I feel like a lot of young girls follow me. Like, I don't, I couldn't care about like the girls that that are like my age or girls that are older than me because I feel like you 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 know what you're doing. You got this, sis. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you've got this. You like you're on your path but for the younger girls that are watching me or that have a similar body type to me or they've been through similar experiences as me I feel pressure on myself for them simply because I have a little sister and so it's like I know what it's like as well to look up to someone and it's like I don't I don't want to disappoint them do you know what I mean? And I want to make them proud and always have them like look up to somebody and be like oh if she can do it I can do it because I can't lie when I came to the UK who was there? Just Mel B, the black girl from Sugar Babes, Denise yep. from EastEnders. Like, let's talk about Not Denise. Denise. <laughs> yeah, Denise from EastEnders. Like, I didn't see a lot of dark skin girls on TV. Okay, Naomi Campbell. Um, and the rest of them were in America. So yeah. like for me to now, like, like when I go on YouTube, I'm so gassed. It's just black girls. I go on TikTok, TikTok, black girls, Instagram, black girls. I never had that. Like, yeah. I, like I grew up in an era where it's like you had to be. Remember when Victoria Beckham came out with the size zero? Yeah. Oh, that was the like, worst. And everybody wanted to be size zero, and I'm sitting yeah. here with my African self. I'm eating pound. I'm eating food, food the minute I get home. When you talk about size zero, and having small boobs like the flat chested white two K was, and I was developing early. Like I had no one to look like me. Wow. Like no one. So for me to just be part of a team of beautiful black women in the UK that are all smashing it. Like the younger generation, I'm sorry, let's spoil you. you guys have you guys are subscribed to like you guys follow like 50 people. I had like two. Like it's not <laughs> fair. It's actually not fair. They're too spoiled. That's why they know how to do their hair from um what's it called? Year seven. Year seven <laughs> ahead late. Guys, I had pick and drop. Whoa. We went what? through it. Premium now. You guys just, no, yep. it's, not fair. it's, not fair. it's, it's not different. Fair. It's yeah. different. But I, I actually love that you, you are aware that your that young people need representation, and you mm-hmm. are definitely representing. So, Thank congrats you. to you. And um, mm-hmm. it's not just on YouTube anymore. It's not. You're not just an online babe. <laughs> I think we gotta say you're a fully fledged broadcaster. Working with BBC One Extra, Netflix, Sky UK, Mobile Awards, Brit Awards, BET, come on. And of course, MTV as the host of Catfish UK, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. But what do you think it is that actually caught the interest of the mainstream TV world and they said, we need Nella? Can I be honest with you? Go for it. Viral memes. Literally, really, viral, uh, viral memes. I feel like, um, like a lot of people started following me because they saw like a meme, like of me saying like "ew, scary" or stuff like that, just a stupid meme. And then they'd go on my channel and actually see that oh, she creates content. Oh, she's good at this. Oh, we should hire her. Do you get it? So yeah. I thought like me going viral on other platforms other than YouTube is what bought bought me opportunities for youtube like it's crazy like i'd be going viral on twitter and tiktok because someone took a a part of my video went viral over there and then it would drive people like i'll be i would be like not posting for two months all of a sudden my views have gone up and all of a sudden people would be like like foot asylum would be like oh we think you'd be great on our show you probably saw a viral tiktok of me led you to my channel and like oh she's 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 funny she's cute oh let's bring her on to our team oh it works and then when foot asylum gave me that opportunity other brands started giving me that opportunity it's like back to fashion over when fashion over gave me the opportunities or other clothing brands like it's all in in the industries so yeah i think i think it's it's going viral so if you want to be successful at anything baby just post it on tiktok (laughs) at this point in this day and age yeah when I was blowing up, there was no TikTok, but now it's like the um shaking my ass on a yacht. All this, just I can't believe my daughters are gonna have to. <laughs> we need to delete that before I have my children. But it's like that went viral on TikTok. Like the 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 video had done its views. You know when your yeah. video has done its views and it slows down. Yeah. Then it went back. It went from like two hundred k to a million because of TikTok. Wow. 
So just post your stuff everywhere. Make make sure that if brands are swollen, they need to see you on every platform. Definitely, because definitely. It's important. And I found that out accidentally. Okay. I didn't but, know that. I mean, enough. yeah, there's a lot that social media has done for a lot of people, which is amazing. Um, yeah. And you're, yeah, you're definitely a testament to that. Thank you. Well, let's 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 go a little deeper because I want to ask. Mm. It, this might. This, I don't want to trigger you, girl. I don't want to trigger yeah. you. But <laughs> but what's something you wish you knew before you came, became a content creator and broadcaster? Like, do you feel like someone should have prepared you? KSI, couldn't you have lent a little a word of advice? Like, do you get what I mean? <laughs> like, um, I think the main thing you know sometimes when an, an idea sometimes is 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 better in your head like Ooh. for example like some of my male friends yeah they'd be dreaming about getting this girl and then they get the girl and it's like she's a headache but it's like you was dreaming about getting that girl now you got and she's a headache so with oh me God. it's i'm i'm a people's person I, I like talking to people i'm very sociable i have a lot of friends and stuff like that but I do feel like I have to pay. Basically, I have no privacy. I have no more okay. privacy. Like that. Like that's it. That's gone. Right. Like I can't go anywhere without being recognized. And so it's like you have to pay your your. You have to pay for more things just for you to feel safer. Right. Um, yeah, so like, like for example, me going to a shopping center, like Stratford, Ooh, for example, it's a myth. Is, a, is a myth because it's a lot of people that are like my demographic that follow me, this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. So it's like mm, shopping, can't really do that. Then, like, certain party holidays, I can't do that anymore. And that's so, like, I, oh. I thoroughly enjoy party holidays and yeah. people trying to find out where you live, people trying to pull up to where you are. You can't post your live location on Instagram and stuff like that. And people, like, I'm a very private person when it comes to, like, like no one's ever heard of me dating anybody. No one's ever heard of me True. doing anything with anyone. I'm a very private person. But it's like, once people know that, We'd never known what happens in Nella's world. Like we must find out, and we must do. What I mean, it's like, oh, where does she live? I heard she lives here. I know she, oh, and wow. it's like, oh, like just, do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. oh, people recording you in public. Is that's really, not nice. That's not nice. Like, yeah, like this, like like this, or like this, and it's no. just yeah. So I do feel like I don't. I do feel like an alien. So like I walk around and people just stare or, and, and stuff like that. And I do feel like sometimes, like I'm not, I do feel like I'm not allowed to leave my house if I'm having a bad day because I would never want, I would never want someone to come up to me like when I'm on like, it's that time of the month and I'm literally trying to buy pads and someone's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm like, I'm dying. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't leave my house if I'm in a bad mood and stuff like that. But I do feel like it, it's, it's, it's a big adjustment yeah because being popular in, in school is different to being popular like in an adult life yeah in the celebrity yeah. world now it's very different yeah but you I'm, I'm getting used to it I'm getting better at it I do plan on like I'm sorry I enjoyed party holidays so much when I was like listen I'm go and have a good time girl I really want to go on a party holiday no I pay no mind to these people <laughs> Like Afro Nation was so late. I have to do that again. No, you have to. Go. No, yeah. Nella, this is a this is a real moment right now. Do really not fun. stop enjoying yourself, please. Yeah. If I if you leave here with anything, this is a reminder to not stop your enjoyment. Yes, you provide enjoyment for everyone else, but you need to live, girl. I want to live. I do. I do. I proper do, babe. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Um, that was I'm our personal doing, moment right there. Um, yeah, I'm getting so much better at it. Like, for example, 80%, because that was my New Year's revolution last year, 80% of the events I went to this year, I went by myself. And that helped me a lot. Wow, well because done. I hide, yeah, I would hide behind, like, oh, I'm with my friends, I'm with people, da da da, da And it was just like, nah, go, talk. Good. Like, go, like, take pictures, stand by the bar, do it. People are going to but it's hard sometimes though because sometimes it's like okay but my wig is not too cute but it's like you've got a cute just you know 
that's the, amazing. Life starts at the end of your comfort zone. And that, that quote has never failed me, ever. Oh. Again, well, she's coming with the gems earlier than expected. Thank you, girl. Thank that you. Was not original. I stole it from some place. <laughs> we'll still take it from you. We'll still take it. Yeah. Well, I've got to say, I am so, so excited for the new series of MTV Cat. Fish UK, come on, second series. How are you feeling about it? Oh, I can't lie. I just, I want the episodes to come out now. Because the what we went through, yeah, shooting the last series, like, police, we was in a different country. Oh, <gasps> no we, way. Yeah, we had the police called up. We had the police pull up. On us, yeah. Oh, they were, what on you? Yeah, girl. Oh. Police. Then we had, we had to go to another country. <laughs> We've been stood up like <gasps> I, I've been disrespected, like by by no. by like like by people that are deceiving other people. Like, I don't. It's a mess. Catastrophic, shambolical flabbergast because it sounds stuff, good yeah. but then one thing that this season taught me them is that bro if you're my friend and you want to listen to me just tell me you want to listen to me because the amount of times no for real like even just in my whole catfish experience the yeah. amount of times it's somebody they know is not normal it's true like, you know what I mean like it's either there's someone really, really far away that you don't know, or it's you're literally like your niece. Like, what's happening here? Like, what's, <laughs> like honestly, I just from now on I just communicate with like, like, bro, do you think I'm sexy? Okay, cool. So you're you're never you're never gonna catfish me, yeah? Okay, we move because the trust issue is now crazy. <laughs> crazy. I'm so excited to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? We need to talk a little bit as well about how the catfish opportunity happened. Because like this is the most yeah. iconic MTV show there is. And especially there being a UK version as it is, is yeah. iconic. But for you, how did the job come about and how did you feel about being the host? Um, so I got an email. You uh, in these emails? Maybe I should be on my phone, but I'm on my phone. <laughs> so then I got an email um asking if basically they were doing like um they were basically looking for the next host basically yeah. and I was like oh my days I've been watching catfish since I was in year nine yeah. of course like what I said what and I made a tweet in 2020 it's still up as well which is crazy I made a tweet in 2020 saying the only reality show I'll ever do or the only show tv show I'll ever do is catfish like no you can literally put it in and you can li you can literally type it in and find it. It's so weird. Like when I saw that tweet, I was actually very scary. But I was like, the only TV show I'd ever do is catfish, and I just tweeted it. Like, can you imagine? Anyways, That's I got crazy. In, they were doing screen tests, or um, so I went in for my screen test, and they made me read like an email, and I was like, oh my god, like this is this is the catfish email. Like this is <laughs> this is this is what they read before they go and investigate. I was like, so I was it's kind of like I forgot that this was like a like a, a job audition I was yep. about the email I was thinking let's get to the fucking tea and um yeah then I got the job and we just started shooting and it's like nothing could have prepared me for the stuff that we experienced even in my first season like when Levi got catfished by his auntie that oh, traumatizes gosh. me to this day. Like, imagine Nothing. your auntie, your auntie matched with you on a date and out, and then she's talking to you, sending you flowers. <sighs> That's yeah, yuck. Like, oh yeah, and, <laughs> and it's like now it's like honestly, don't block and delete your exes because I feel like when you block and delete your exes, they're gonna want to make another account. They come back stronger. So, yeah. To talk to you with like we've seen circumstances where it's that okay you didn't we did our thing it didn't work out so I'm gonna make a page of a girl that I know is your type and that oh I know God. you're gonna respond to you, and then we're gonna lips basically <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just, oh, well, yeah. well you've sold us 
<laughs> the show sounds like it's going to be epic. I'm so excited. Uh, it drops on the 11th of January. This is a great way to start off 2023. We love to see it. We love to see it. And um, yeah, I've got to do the tradition that we do here on the mainstream and yes. ask you for your top five tips. So Nella Rose, okay. what are your top five tips to make it in the mainstream? First tip, like I said, life starts at the end of your comfort zone. If you're comfortable, you're not growing. If you're comfortable, you're not evolving. But the minute you step out of your comfort zone, blessings come and it's just you grow and you experience new things. And I feel like that's what life is all about. Number Amen. two, if an idea pops into your head more than three times, do it. It's your sign to do it. It doesn't matter that you don't have the resources. It doesn't matter that you don't have the experience. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're inexperienced or you don't have the connect do it and it it will come to you if it was meant yeah. for you you know what i mean and there's a Definitely. reason why, like ideas land in people's heads like i said we will not have a microwave if the idea never landed in his head so <laughs> go and make yourself a microwave bitch um <laughs> tip number three is um never try and change yourself because the minute you try and change yourself it becomes addictive so mm. oh i'm gonna start dressing this way and you get all bunch of followers because you start just that way and it's like oh what's the next step okay I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna and it's it's this it's masked and disguised as like self-improvement but really you're just rubbing off you're rubbing off your true self and becoming an exact replica of someone else and that's not who you was destined to be or else you would have been a triplet you would have been a twin but you it's wouldn't true. so be yourself um and Love being yourself will always make you win like there's there's no you shouldn't want to be like any other person because you're special and you're great and everyone in your life loves you so people are going to love you in whatever you do so don't be scared about trying to be someone else you're enough yep. um number number four. number four be in your own lane like comparison is literally the thief of joy um when you're in your own lane, like say for example I have a hundred subscribers. Like, okay, so let me use an example for me. Yeah? I, I was like, I had a hundred subscribers, then I had 200 subscribers and I had 300 subscribers. And then I literally saw someone that just dropped a video and they had like 10,000 followers, like oh, wow. subscribers in a very short period of time when I had been grinding. And that really made me feel like people don't like me. People yeah. don't like content. People, people, my quality must be shit. Like, there's there's clearly something that's not helping me grow and it's like it wasn't your time it was that person's time and your time is going to come when you're ready so stop comparing and just try and perfect your graft bro yeah Basically. love that so so don't look at other people and just focus on yourself and i know that sometimes it can be hard because that like they're in your industry and stuff like that but it's so bad it's the thief of joy don't do it everybody's journey is different and fifth one, if it doesn't, yeah, don't be a people pleaser. Oh, that was a good last yeah. one. Come on, tell don't, us, tell us. Don't, don't be a people pleaser, especially in this industry, because in this industry, givers don't know how to stop giving and takers never know when to stop taking. So it's like, be, yeah, so don't be a people pleaser and set boundaries because in this industry your face is your brand you are your brand so if you just want to please everybody you will lose yourself because you start living for other people if you mm. grinded to make a name for yourself so that you can be self-employed and live the life that you want live it for you and don't live it for other people so learn to say no mm. and read your contracts and get a lawyer <laughs> a couple bonus tips we love to see it oh that is exactly what we all needed to hear to kickstart 2023 Nella oh. you are such a boss I love it thank, thank you so you. much I've actually got a, a new feature that we put into the mainstream which is a quick fire bit with some questions ah. from listeners oh okay. which I'm super excited about so okay, so the first first we're calling this the mainstream moments these are moments that we just want to give back to our listeners and first question's from Onka. Onka said, like, I feel like you probably heard this before, but what's been your most embarrassing moment and how did you come back from it? Oh, I've had too many. Oh, I've had too many. I say embarrassed like 50 times a day. Anyways, I went to my first ever rave at uni 
and I had a closure wig, but back in the day, that's why I'm so jealous of this generation. Back in the day, we didn't even have elastic band method. Um, and yeah, there was a mosh pit. My wig flew off and I had to look for it. Like, oh. imagine your wig flies. Yeah, my wig flew off and I had to look for it. Like, bro, I had to look. Imagine looking for your wig in a club. Like, oh, disgusting. Oh, it was so appalled. I it love was, it. Yeah, I think that's one of my most embarrassing moments. Like, and my cornrows weren't fresh. That, oh. Mm-mm. Oh, sis. <laughs> I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry. Okay, next major moment. This is from Candice. She mm. says, what's not so glamorous about being an influencer? Even though we've discussed this, but you know, we're going to use uh, the influencer word for now. Um, Not being able to go out in public and not be seen. Yeah. Some days you just want to feel invisible. You're at the airport. Like, it's you're in your head stuff. It's enough. <laughs> Sometimes you just pop up to the corner shop you know the corner shop outfits it'll be like a dressing gown yeah one sock is blue one sock is red like you're wearing a beanie like sometimes i just wanna and some days i just don't want people to see me that way <laughs> some days uh, I up and there's two nails left like it's bad <laughs> we've all been there the rats on the highway is disgusting so yeah just know that once your face is out there you can't erase it from the internet. People will always recognize you. So be be prepared. And buy big yeah. shades. But buy what was the last reason? Big shades. Oh, that's a tip. Let me write that down. Okay. <laughs> We've got another one. Now, this one's definitely for you. Kim says, How important is it in the beginning to have a strong circle? It's everything. It's everything. Um yeah, everything. I wouldn't be in the race if it wasn't for my friends, if it wasn't for my family. I wouldn't be anyone. No one would be my videos. No one would share my stuff. No one would support me. No one would believe in my dreams. So I feel like it's really, really important. And if you don't have a lot of friends, like my dad was my best friend. So like Aww. lean on your parents. Um, Your parents are more understanding than you think. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, having a strong circle because once you blow up, sometimes, unfortunately, people come into your life because they they want to get next to you so that they can, um, like, level up as well. But your yeah. friends, the ones that you started with, they were, they were like, you know, those are bad. Like, it's you just do good. So they can share their ass on yeah, because you pay for it. Period, y'all. <laughs> so, yeah, strong foundation is really good. And also simply because when you join this industry you tend to become friends with a lot of people that make like the same kind of of money as you and they do the same things as you your friends will bring you back down to reality and remember where you came from so yeah. always the people that you were broke with next to you like and yeah let's all grow together don't think oh because i'm this this that i live this this that i'm better than da, 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 da. no Okay, I like, I like that. I like that. Okay, I got an anonymous, anonymous cheeky one. Oh no! Nog, marry, avoid, okay. chunks, young Philly, Harry Panero. Okay, avoid Harry, avoid chunks, and avoid Philly because <laughs> the incest is against my religion. It's against me. Is I don't do incest. I would never snog or marry my siblings. That's just disgusting. Absolutely. The best answer from a catfish host. We love that. We love- <laughs> And finally, I really love this one from Audrey. Yeah. Um, it's 2023 is here. What are you excited about? Girl, it still feels like a December. It feels like a long ass December. <laughs> How can that question throw me off that? It feels like a long December. Okay. So what I'm excited about, I'm excited about traveling. Nice. I'm excited about just creating content for other people's channels and helping, you know, like I'm, I'm, you know, I've edited videos on YouTube and you didn't even know it was me. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I do that. Yeah. So it's like, and directing and stuff like that. So just, just living in my creativity, it just brings me so much happiness. It's like the best form of escapism ever. I love it. So traveling more, and I really want to be healthy this year. Mm, I feel like, speak it. Yeah, like I just, I feel like I've been on TikTok a lot, and I've just seen all like this gut health, like you know, when you're just in the hole. So yeah, I'm gonna gonna start drinking my my teas, my vitamins. 
you know, having vegetables with every meal. Fuck it, why not? Let's be healthy. Shit. You go, girl. You <laughs> go, girl. I love that. Love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Nella, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. You've definitely given me lots me. of inspo for 2023 and um yeah i'm sure the listeners are going to be so excited to see you on catfish once again for another series with the lovely uber so congratulations and um yeah any last words for the mainstreamers um big up to you you've been doing your thing for years on years on years and i think the first time i saw you was was it back chat reunion Oh Lord, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and I remember thinking like, who's this girl? Like she's so classy, she's so poised, and she's just really professional. And then I've just been seeing you smashing it. Nice. And yeah, you're just you're amazing. I love just seeing us black girls. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, I'll probably you. see a lot more of you this year because I'm gonna be outside. Um, we outside together, girl. <laughs> so super proud of you. And yeah, this is I've really enjoyed myself today. Oh, thank you. I mean, that was supposed to be a message for the listeners, but I'll take it. Oh, for the listeners, read your book. Oh, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, thank you so much. Where can they follow you? Where can they watch you? All that good stuff. Um, Just type in Nella Rose on any platform. If it's not verified, it's not me. Please don't <laughs> for it. I, I'm pretty sure I'm on Tinder somewhere. It's enough. <laughs> like, oh. It's not, yeah. If it's not verified, it's not me. Take it from me. I'm a catfish host. If That's it's not right. verified, it's not me. But yeah, if you type in Nella Rose anywhere and it's verified, you can find me there. I post bits here and there that people might enjoy. And yeah, check me out. Be your cup of tea. You never know. You never yes, know. we love to see it. Thank you so much for joining us on the Main Street. No problem. Thank you for listening to the Mainstream Podcast with me, Ramel London. Make sure you subscribe, rate and review on Apple and Spotify and follow us at The Mainstream UK and at Ramel underscore London.